today, I'd like to continue our conversation on variations. And uh, we've been talking about direct variation and inverse variation. And I want to talk about the idea of combining types of variation. So I'd start, I guess, by reminding you that direct variations come in the general form y equals kx, and inverse variations come in the form y equals k over x, remembering that this k right here is this k right here. So these are the constant, of, the constant of variation. Uh, in our example, the variable w varies directly as the product of u and v, and inversely as the square of s. So this whole thing would have come in actually one color probably if it had been typed out, but I think it's good now that we kind of color code this because hopefully you can see here that we have a direct variation here, and we also have an inverse variation here. So I'm going to just set that up and say that for our direct variation, right, our direct variation is going to take this form right here, right? So this is us doing our direct variation. Our direct variation is going to be equal to, well, it says varies directly as the product of u and v. So we know that we get k, our constant of variation, and there's u and v, right? So that kind of takes care of the general, the general form of the first part of the question. Now we need the general form of the second part. And it says here, can we have an inverse variation? If you don't mind, I'll do that in orange. We say now that w, right, has an inverse, is, has an inverse proportionality to the square of x, so that would be k over s. It says square here, so s and I'd like to remind us again that this k and this k are the same one. Now all I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is I'm going to combine these two. Wow, that was fun. I'm going to combine these two and say that w is equal to k times uv. That's the direct proportionality. And then here's the inverse. Here is s squared. So Again, all I did was just combine them. This s squared is this one, and this is that one. So all I did is put them together to get one equation. All right, so there's our kind of our jumping off point, and this is uh, our specific our specific equation, but it's just incomplete because we this is a constant number, right? This is going to have a numeric value. This is going to have a number to it. So we need to figure out what is that constant number. So what is that number? Uh, I guess, so we, if we move on in the question, it says, A, that if W equals 20 and U equals 3, V, I'm going to spell V, V equals 5, and s equals 2, find the constant of variation. So find the constant constant, right? Constant of variation is k of variation. So take a second, write this down, and we will move on with it. But here we go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation that we started right here. I'm just going to rewrite it, and I'm going to fill in some blanks, right? So it says that our equation is this one, that W is equal to K times U times V over S squared, right? This U, V, S. And I'm just plug in some values here, and the value we get for U is that U is 3. The value for V is Five, the value for s is two, so we get two squared. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, so far, so good. Do a little bit of algebra here. Oh, oh, we got w. Sorry, and w equals twenty, right? W equals twenty. So now we have all of our values substituted for. And if you look now, it looks much simpler. We only have one variable, one variable. So we can just solve that, simplify this. So simplify. And we'll get 20 equals 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 times k is 15k, isn't it? 
uh, 2 squared is 4, if you don't mind. And then all I'm going to do here to make this easier on myself is going to cross multiply. I'm going to multiply this way and that way. And we'll get right 15, whoops, not x, but 15k is equal to 80. And then, of course, k is equal to 80 over 50, 80 over 15, so 80 over 15 is that value. I'm sure it simplifies out, but I'm going to leave it like that if you don't mind. But now, now I think we can go back and we can find, this is the important part because this is our whole goal was, we're going to use these equations later to, to look at things like Cook's Law, uh, liquid pressure laws, electronic resistance laws, period of a planet, Columns law, ideal gas law. We're going to find radon concentrations in these word problems, and it's going to get really, really difficult. So the goal here is to be able to find the equation, and we can just plug in numbers. So remember that our original equation was, our original equation was this, right? Was W equals U V over S squared. And we did have a K value here, right? But now we've solved that. And we know that K is 8 over 15, uh, 80 over 15. So 80 over 15. I have to be careful here that my S looks like an S. So S's look like this. S squared. And I guess this thing does simplify out. And I'm going to have to. It simplifies out to W is equal to 16 thirds, right? U, V over S squared. And this is our complete specific formula. And we got that by solving for K and putting and plugging it back in. I know this is a little bit weird. I just want you to kind of think about how all this works. Um, we started by knowing what we, were, what we were looking for. We read the question carefully. We came up with our direct variation. We went back. We found that we have an inverse variation, too, so we set that up. We combined the two. After we combined the two, the book kind of forces to it, but this is the natural progression. We find this general form of the question, and then we start plugging in values, and we, what we're looking for is the k value because we need to put a number in here. Right? This is a perfect equation, except it's missing this constant number. So we went through all the gyrations of finding k. We plugged in the, the values that the, the author offered us. We found the k value here. We simplified the k value. And then we remember, we had to go back, right? We had to go back and find this specific equation. And given the specific equation, if you're in physics or in chemistry, you could find that you'd be using this specific equation all day. So the hardest part would be to set it up after that. It's really just plugging in numbers into your calculator. So what I hope to do in the next video is to go through some specific problems. The next video is just going to be me working through some very specific problems like this. From there, though, we go on to the word problems. So it's really, really important that you get this down. I hope you watch this video a couple of times and you take meticulous notes, not on this exact problem, but Fundamentally, what is it that we did? What was the uh, what was the algorithm? What was the model for how we did this? So keep working at it.